What's good everybody, it's Brahams and today guys, I'm coming to you with a brand new video, but before we get into that guys, please go ahead and leave a like on this video guys, let's try and get 20 likes on this video, and of course, subscribe if you have not already guys, because we're so close to 7,000 subscribers, and once we hit it guys, I can finally start doing a giveaway, and finally, check out all the socials down below guys, you'll be able to find my Instagram, where I'm really close to doing a 100 follower giveaway, and of course, my Discord as well, where I'm a lot more active, if you guys have any questions, and then finally, please go ahead and leave a comment on this video guys, if you have anything to say, I try my best to respond to each and every single one of your guys' comments but without further ado guys let's get right into the video all right guys so now we are going to get into the deck profile so the first cards you play of course are sword soul of moyi literally one of the best normal summons going first or probably the best normal summon going first um in your deck and then we pair that with triple sword soul strategist long yuan now again this deck has been going on for so long there's not much to talk about really um, and then of course you play double sword of Taya. Um, at this point you don't really play Taya at anything else, or you don't even mess with these ratios at all. And then to round it off, guys, we play our triple sword of Ecclesia or uh, Incredible Ecclesia. I feel like this lineup is standard. This ratio is standard. There's nothing to change about this at all. Um, this card's super broken when you go second. Taya is really OP um, when you have to do some other weird plays. Um, or if you go second, you can just still take OTKs really powerfully. Long Yuan is just Long Yuan. He's absolutely insane. And then Moi is Moi. So that's it for the main deck sorcerer cards, guys. Now moving on to the Tenyis. We play triple Tenyi Spirit Ashuna. Um, of course, it's the best. Then we play double Tenyi Spirit of Ashuna. We play double Adhara. And then we play the one Mapura. So I'm sure that you guys are interested in my ratio. So triple Ashuna, it's pretty self-explanatory. It's the best card you want to see in your hand. It's how you facilitate a lot of Chao Fang plays, things of that nature. You just go special summon Chao Fang or special summon Ashuna, link away into Monk, and then play through there. So double Ashuna and double Adhara. The way that it came up for me is that the Tenyis are really good going first, but into a cast chair board, they're very underwhelming, especially when you go special Tenyi link away, it gets banished. So you have to sacrifice the Tenyi to get the Vishuda effect live. And um, what they can do is they can just go ahead and banish the monk what they summon. So I felt like it was a little weird. So I just wanted to have the ratios like this, especially because I wanted to make more space for tech cards of the format or more board breakers in a sense. So that's why I decided to run my lineup like this. The only card that I may put to three is Triple Adhara, just because it's really nice in the grind game having an ashuna special summon an adhara and then go adhara and long you want into a yang zing play like a yazi um but apart from there though i didn't really miss out on it too much and it also allows my extra deck to be a lot more flexible um as you guys will see um later on and then the one mapura was just a test um it was this or shtana shtana is really good when you have blackout plays you can go blackout pop your monk and then pop two and then banish the monk and reborn to pop again so it's really good in that regard um the reason why i decided to put in mapura though is i anticipate a lot of trap tricks and labyrinth and Labyrinth, they have a lot of targeted removal like Dogmatic Punishment, um, Compulsory Evacuation Device, things of that nature. So Mapura basically says, um, when a card or effect is activated, that targets a non-effect monster, banish this card, and negate it and destroy it. So it leaves your monk on board. Um, so it, not only does it do that, it also helps play around annoying cards as well. So if you go like Special Attendee, Link Away into Monk, they go Compulse Target the Monk, you can go Banish Mapura, negate it, and then you can just continue playing from there. So it's really good. Um, in that regard, will I change it moving forward? I'm not too sure right now just because the labyrinth cards when they play the field spell They can pop non-targeting so there is um, an argument to be made for that case But in my opinion, I think that Mopur is worth testing especially um, it's a fire So it gives you another attribute for the backseat spin with Taya So you go like Taya spin, um, Heavenly Dragon Circle tribute the Moyi, things of that nature So you'll get two spins at least going second so it's really good in that regard also so yeah that's that's my 10 lineup guys it's not the heavier one so i see a lot of people playing three um three and then three in the one i decided to forego that just because i wanted more tech space um being able to kind of um sculpt my hands around it is very nice especially if you can sequence your plays really well that's really what source thrives off of and now getting on to the monster hand traps guys i've been playing triple nibiru um triple nibiru yet yeah. i'm playing triple nibiru and i'm playing triple ash blossom and that's it for the monster hand traps now nibiru was okay for me honestly i sided it out a lot um and the reason for that is nibiru is not good against labyrinth it's okay against trap tricks when they do like their wombo combo play um branded sometimes they don't even summon five times similar to other decks of the format like cash tira i mean game one's nibiru is really good and the threat of nibiru is very powerful as well and the fear of unknown so your opponent will never know if you actually have nibiru so the concept of nibiru is really good i feel like moving forward you still need to play this card um, just because of how good it is being able to slap your opponent when they kind of overextend when they try to go for game and you're forcing a lot of their things as well so that's why i feel like nibiru is very um very good if not a main deck three of a side deck at least two of at least but again he's shown and then again ash blossoms and ftk against branded i played i believe it was well two branded i played two branded and ash blossom went absolutely crazy for me there literally there were boards where like if you can go special summon ashuna or like say for example you can go like special summon this 
uh, norm summon the ash go into um a yazzie playing continue playing against bandit it's almost never worth it because not only will they have something to stop your yazzie but they'll also be able to have follow play for next turn and ash blossom such shuts off every single one of their cards so again yeah they might have cross up but it doesn't matter because you just play the odds um their odds are drawing cross outs the same as you drawing ash blossom so again it's very powerful for me like there were a lot of plays where like depending on what my hand was i would literally just go like she shall blackout with an ash blossom in my hand didn't matter what they did because i knew my ash blossom was going to protect me from cards like cross the designator i mean sorry not cards like cross the designator, cards, cards like banded fusion banded opening things of that nature so again very good i wouldn't change these ratios honestly maybe i would change the monster count but i'll showcase it later so that's it for the main deck monster hand traps now moving on to the spell cards, of course we are playing triple sword solely murders because why would I not play a Rota in my deck that literally manipulates the level, helps me OTK, things of that nature, and then we are playing triple heavenly dragon Soak. Now heavenly dragon Soak is a very powerful card, so this is another reason why I decided to not play three ten use. So a lot of the lists that you see, I'm going to just move emergence off for you guys, a lot of the lists that you see, they'll be on like either triple Vashuda or they'll be on triple Adharo, and they'll play like that, so basically they'll have this and this with the heavenly dragon circle and then this will be the other card that they have so they'll go like this but the reason why i wanted triple heavenly dragon circle is again like i said before um trap tricks is popular lab is very popular i want to open heavenly dragon circle almost every single one of my hands literally no matter what i want to open it because it prevents them from removing your monsters by a trap effect um it also helps you dodge a lot also and it makes um mapura very powerful as well because Mapura is literally the OP effect where like you go normal Moi, Moi reveal a card, summon a token, do you have any drag circle, tribute it, get Mapura, special Mapura because you just have a token in Mapura, then you go Mapura and thing away um, into Baxia, shuffle them, you just kind of take apart their board, and it gives you very powerful follow up play. Um, almost every single game that I lost against a back row deck, it would be because I didn't see Heavenly Dragon Circle. There was one funny instance where like I drew like four cards and I drew three Heavenly Dragon Circle, but that's like very instance based, um, variants and things of that nature. So yeah, I would just play these spell cards. Um, leave it at that. If you want, I can definitely I can definitely see you wanting to cut this card down just to kind of slim the deck up, go to forty. Um, but I think that just having this and having the versatility of having Dragon Circle is very powerful. It does suck that it's not like a worm card, or like a tenny card or sorcerer card, but it helps you get your tenny non-effect monsters stuff like that then moving on to some more spells guys of course we play trouble book of eclipse now this card was the most underwhelming card for me again we're anticipating a lot of cash tira um but the funny thing is not a lot of people are on cash tira anymore and if they are you have other cards to kind of deal with cash tira especially if they just do a riser pass so book of eclipse is okay um there was one instance where like i book of eclipse a branded board and i forced a lot of out of him because like, he already went through brandon red he had like um i think the warning face down so he couldn't use any of that he could use mercury or stuff like that so it was really good but in the most part i think almost out of every single match i sided this card out the most um just because it was okay going first and like kind of going second but again to each your own um it's also very bad against sword soul because if you go like normal moe reveal a token they go book the clips uh, book the moe you can just special summon your tennies and play through there um backseat pop the moe reborn the moe things of that nature so um book of eclipse i would definitely like this is probably on the chopping block for me in my opinion i don't i don't think i would keep playing this card i'm just gonna need to see how the format kind of develops but at my locals book of eclipse was like okay there's a couple cashier players there i never played against them honestly my little brother played book of eclipse he said it was okay but again book of eclipse is, is very mid might move it to the side deck for more um for better cards i guess and then of course we're playing the god card which is part desires which is literally just draw two and then this is honestly another card that i chose to put in my deck last second and it's triple tactics talents now again the reason why i really like this pair is part desires not only does it let you draw two it lets you draw into talents which is a board breaker but again when you go into my side deck patterns i had two extra cards that i needed to remove for kind of like backward decks or just to have in general against control matchups where like the combo cards like book of eclipse nibiru um imperm aren't as good and that's where i decided to put in the talents in the main deck just kind of steady it out i am at a 42 card so if you want these are the 41st and 42nd card you can remove them and just play 40 but for me talents went absolutely crazy every single game i activate talents i want being draw two, being to take a monster as well so it's really powerful in that regard mostly you're going to be drawing because there's a lot of instances with sword soul where you kind of feel like you don't have enough gas so talents helps you get into the gas especially go talents draw two potters eyes draw two you're guaranteed to see some of your side deck cards especially because i'm siding in multiple packages depending on the decks i'm playing against which i'll showcase later on it's not like i'm just siding in three cards i'm siding in a lot of cards depending on the matchup so that's why i decided to play these four spell cards and i would not change these for sure i would definitely not change those cards those cards went absolutely crazy for me and then for the trap cards you play triple infinite impermanence again and then to round it off the one sword soul blackout i know it's not an ultra it's a common 
um yeah whatever but yeah imperm is imperm again like i said for imperm castura is very good any literally on anything um imperming sword souls in imperming lubellians lubers is very powerful as well um imperming like gigantic sprites things of that nature so you can really see imperm is like one of the most versatile hand traps um apart from of course ash blossom and joy spring and then of course you play the one blacker for the pop cards but yeah if you guys see and i was showcasing this before so out of my like defensive cards i play triple um imperm triple book of eclipse i play triple ash blossom and then i play triple nibiru so now i'm playing three six nine twelve i'm playing 12 um essential go second cards or just kind of board breakers um and then you notice i don't have a lot of cards for back row right of course and i didn't want to main deck outs to back row because it's always weird so i decided to main deck talents now Talents has the most versatility in all of these because if I'm going first, I can still sit on Nibiru's, of course, but if I get hand trapped, which a lot of people are on Nibiru or Ash Blossom, Talents not only helps you play through it, but it also helps you play into it as well, being able to draw cards, um, kind of sculpt your hand to the point where, like, if you go, like, normal Mo Yi, they go Valor or Ash or you get something like that, you can go Talents, draw two, see your hand, and then decide if you want to keep pushing. So that's why I decided to play like this 14 go second slash board breaker tech cards. But now moving on to the extra deck, guys. The extra deck, of course, before we do it, shout out my field center Swablu, super cool. Um, and then moving on to the extra deck, guys, it is going to be a super standard extra deck, like I've always said before. Um, so again, you have the tokens, you gotta have tokens when you play Sword Soul, of course. Why would you not play tokens if you're not playing Sword Soul? And then um, we're just gonna go ahead and move these guys over here. And then for the extra guys, we play double monk. So the reason why I don't play three monk is there's a couple reasons. So the first reason is that I'm not on the heavier 10 e count like a lot of people are. So the other people are on like the three, six, nine, uh, one. So they're on nine 10 e's. I'm not on the nine 10 e's. I'm on the seven 10 e's. And again, a lot of my plays um, with the monk as well, having Mapura helps you save the one monk. Um, so the third monk doesn't really come up. And if you resource management very properly, you don't really need the third monk. It came up for me one time, but in that specific instance, it was like, okay, I'm like, okay, there could have been a third third monk here but it wouldn't have helped me kind of like otk or facilitate my plays any better so that's why i decided to just kind of stick with the two monks three monk does come up if you play the heavier 10 years so if you're on the heavy 10 years i would definitely recommend you guys to play the three monk but for me personally i think two monk is perfectly fine so that's it for the monks and then i play the one shaman now shaman is very good shaman's kind of crucial against like d barrier if you're going second and you can still have side deck cards you can go shaman here monk here and then you can attack with monk use shaman effect to pop a card and then pop again and attack so it's very good in that regard i thought about playing draco masters of the tenny but i would definitely rather play a third monk over the draco masters um just because the d bear interaction um baguska is not as popular anymore anyway so like you don't really need the third monk also um and then the one um shaman and then the final link monster i play is lina again i you saw i main deck nibiru basically the theory is that you nib summon a monster go nib and monster away into lina lina crash when lina dies you get ecclesia i never actually summon this card but i nibbed a lot but i never summon this card so it's kind of underwhelming in that regard the theory is nice i mean Technically speaking, if you get Nibiru token, I think you can link this and, Nibiru, and the Nib token and a monster away into this card um, and then crash and then get Ecclesia. So technically there's a play for that, but it's just really weird. Like I never really summoned this card. Maybe I wanted to play more um, engine cards. Maybe I wanted to play like some more spicy cards, but again, it doesn't really matter. That's it for the link monsters. Um, and then moving on for the synchros, I play the one Yazzie, of course, and then I play the double Baxio. Um, so again, Yazzie Baxia, very good package. Yazzie pops a card, Baxia shuffle. When you go second, this is what makes Taya really good because you can go normal summon Taya. Taya banish emergence, sum the token, um, and then emergence will like lower the token or lower Taya, it doesn't really matter. I like to lower the token personally because if they have a way of removing my Taya, I can essentially go ahead and remove, um, I can essentially go ahead and remove uh, Taya, sum the token, sum the level four, sorry, you can go to Yazzie. Again, Baxia is Baxia, helps you OTK a lot. This is how you do like a lot of your Chao Fang plays as well. And then speaking of Chao Fang, for the last Yang Zing monster I play is Chao Fang. So again, the, these, there's literally a way, literally, there's literally a way when you're kind of laddering your synchros, you just go into a Chao Fang. So it's really good. So you go Yazzy pop, pop uh, Yazzy summon a guy, guy into Baxia, Baxia shuffle, and then Baxia like pop, reborn, go into Chao Fang. So it's really nice in that regard. Um, also, and then just having Chao Fang is really nice because even if they out it, you just get a hand trap, you get Ecclesia, things of that nature. Really nice. Then moving on, we play double Shishao. Again, there's not much to say about this card. This card's like engaged in the deck. This card's really good. Effect failure also. Um, there are a lot of instances. Now, this card is very underrated. There are a lot of instances and in a lot of decks and a lot of games where I would literally, during my opponent's turn, go Shishao, search Blackout, and then just pass with like two hand traps. And, and, and it was so much for my opponent to deal with. Like they couldn't out it. So that's, I feel like Swords is a very good deck, especially if you can pilot it correctly. But that's it for 
these guys and then moving on we play the one draco berserker because it's a very good card in the deck of course it's just super generic removal tenny's help you make it a lot helps you out a lot of problematic monsters his attack gain is permanent as well so dealing with kind of annoying cards it's really nice um non-targeting banish as well and then we play the one adamant spader dragite now dragite's the latest addition i almost never played dragite but against branded post side or even going on later, the only hard negate you have is Baron. So you want to end up on a Dragon as well if you can, being able to just prevent multiple spell cards from reacting. So just because Bandit doesn't play a lot of board breakers, the cards just kind of play through a lot of random stuff. So just having the Dragon as an additional negate is very powerful. And then moving on into the tens, we have our Baron, our Cheng Ying, and our Shishing Wan Zuan. So again, Baron is a very good card. You make this card almost always when you're going first because it helps you play around the Biru. If you don't have this play, you kind of have to default into one of your other fallback plays, which is like the control play stuff like that and if you don't have that you might have to push making shishing long you want there's one instance where i did the draw two play but for a lot of the times making this card like um get sorry not game three um turn three turn four turn five is very is very beneficial as well and then cheng ying this is how you go for game i only summoned cheng ying once but it was just like a nasty otk summon baron a lot baron pop a card attack for game things of that nature and then shishing long you want is very good as well especially against branded um you saw branded and lost you banished a lot of their cards as well so it's pretty good in that regard and then we're just going to quickly get into the side deck guys so for the side deck i decided to play um where is it so i decided to play um when i go first i would side in one appointer and i would side in triple d barrier so this is really good um for the mirror match things of that nature as well um a fun fact about d barrier as well as you side this in going second against a lot of the decks because sorcerer can break a lot of boards and then d barrier stun your opponent and then play again and then a pointer was just the extra card i wanted against back row decks against control decks where like my other hand traps weren't as good i would just side in these cards when i would go second so that's it for kind of like my go first cards and then i would go ahead and i would also side in triple ghost spell in haunted mansion now ghost spell was like 50 50 for me i sat in a lot against um branded had two brand matchups sided in against branded i only saw it once but it was still kind of nice the only issue is the one time i saw it they did the expulsion play um and they had mercury in their hand so i couldn't play um so it sucks but i mean ghost spell is really good i might test playing the bishops in the future just because the bishops kind of can do a lot more they can um just kind of dd crow always so when they dump the card into the graveyard you can bishop it then instead of having to wait for them to get mercurier and then for the back row i was really scared of back row um maybe it was warranted maybe it wasn't i played double cyclone one duster and then i played triple evenly match so now evenly is a very good card and the reason why i like evenly as well is because evenly is not only good against combo decks being a board breaker very good against backward decks as well um a lot of the decks i know they're on land chain pure iron wall things of that nature so all these cards kind of lose out to it but sword soul you kind of just bait 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 and then you push you never really kind of commit going first you all just kind of take your time poke away at the board so that's why i decided to play this and then the last two cards i didn't really know what to play i decided to play in um dark hole going second it's really good against the ibleed lock i mean not a lot of people are on the ibleed lock anyways but like i was saying before my side deck and the way that it's lined up is like very very important depending on what i'm playing in so like for example dark hole and evenly almost went in almost always when i would go second against like big combo decks um and then if i was to go first let me just move this over i would go d barriers and i would go a pointer so like d barriers and a pointers which is really good as well um and then like i said before if i'm going against more backward decks i would throw in triple cyclone feather duster and i would take out nibiru's and i would take out book of eclipses because not that good so now i have six cards to remove then i have talents to help me draw into these cards as well which is really nice and then when i would go into branded decks i would play um triple ghost spell and the haunted mansion depending just because i was a little worried of brand expulsion things of that nature i didn't want to get locked out so that's it for my deck file, guys. If you guys really liked it, I would really appreciate it. If you guys left a like, let me know what you guys want to change down below. So guys, that was it for the video. If you guys didn't like the video, please go ahead and leave a like on this video. Again, subscribe if you have not already and you made it to the end of the video because what are you doing, man? Seriously. But again, guys, my name is Hamza. And like I always say, keep on shining. Never go on your dreams. Peace.